Coming up in this episode of In Clear Focus. The actual search isn't what impacts the share of market. It's what the search represents. So an increase in share of search means that there's an increase in demand in the market for your brand. And that in turn increases your share of market. You're listening to In Clear Focus, fresh perspectives on marketing and advertising produced weekly by Big Eye, a strategy-led full-service creative agency growing brands for clients globally. Hello, I'm your host, Adrian Tennant, Chief Strategy Officer. Thank you for joining us. Brand managers often face challenges when trying to accurately calculate the total market size and their brand's share of that market. Determining these figures usually requires access to reliable, typically syndicated market research data, which can be expensive to obtain, especially for smaller, challenger brands and those in unmeasured markets. For advertisers, figuring out the appropriate level of investment in media to effectively reach target audiences and influence market share is a similarly complex task, requiring knowledge of the competitive landscape and consumers' behaviour within the appropriate category. Brands on a growth trajectory can seek to capture excess share of voice, essentially outspending their competitors relative to their market size. But what if you don't know a brand's market size and don't have access to syndicated data? Over the past three years, research has found significant positive correlations between the share of branded search terms and brands' share of market. A study published last year by the Institute of Practitioners in Advertising found the correlation between share of search and share of market across 30 case studies and 12 categories was an average of 83%. Today's guest is an experienced digital marketer who's been instrumental in promoting and operationalizing share of search, not just as a proxy for share of market, but also for forecasting market dynamics. Carl Clevbo is the lead analyst on the founding team at My Telescope, a platform that uses share of search data to help brands and agencies understand the emotional and behavioral impacts of their marketing strategies. Carl has over a decade of professional experience in marketing and research, and to discuss how My Telescope supports strategists and planners working with share of search data, Carl is joining us today from Stockholm in Sweden. Carl, welcome to In Clear Focus. Hello, Adrian. Thank you so much for having me on. Carl, could you start by explaining what share of search, or SOS for short, is? Absolutely. So, in its simplest form, Share of search is simply the searches for your brand's name versus the sum of your competitors' brand's names. And this might sound quite trivial if you're hearing this for the first time. So why is this important? So let's look at what somebody taking time out of their day to search for our brand reveals to us. First of all, it means that a potential customer is actually aware of your brand. So it helps you understand awareness. Secondly, it reveals that they're actually interested in us. And this is a super important distinction because as David Ogilvy, the father of advertising, once said, you cannot bore people into buying your product. You can only interest them in buying it. And what David Ogilvy says here is actually backed up by our research and the IPA research that shows that if you raise interest and you subsequently raise the branded searches, that has a very strong correlation to increasing your sales. Essentially, it's a way of knowing if you're creating more people who are aware and considering buying from your brand in relation to your competitors. Got it. And I just want to be clear, what's the equation again? So the equation of share search is the volume of searches for your brand's name versus the total sum of volume of searches for your competitors' brands. Okay. How does share of search help planners and strategists understand consumer demand and market dynamics? Well, first of all, it gives us a very reliable and also available way of tracking our brand building, which frankly, a lot of marketers have been missing. And it allows us to show, first and foremost, how our actions are actually contributing to future sales and if we're winning or losing in our category. And when we lack a metric like that, which quite a lot of us do, our budgets are the first to be cut as soon as times are tough. And unfortunately, we can see that all around us right now. I mentioned in the intro that we've been looking at this kind of data for about the past three years. 
So, Carl, how did share of search as a metric originate? Yeah, so like many great discoveries, as soon as it becomes viral, everybody claims to have used it before. And that's also the case for us at My Telescope as well. We had actually started playing around with this metric to show demand for our clients' brands versus competitors because we thought it made sense. But we were almost too hesitant to, and frankly embarrassed, to show the source to our customers because it seemed a little bit too simple and a little bit too good to be true. And that was the case for many out there. And since you're asking for the metric, a data point isn't really a metric until you can unify the industry and an organization around it. And that first happened when the effectiveness godfather, Les Bennett, along with James Hankins, published their research proving that there was actually a, a very significant correlation between share of search and market share. And since then, share of search has become more and more of a standard as marketing associations like the IPA in, in England and the Swedish Advertisers Association have rallied behind it. And along with a host of global organizations, both on the agency and on the client side. Well, you mentioned that it's a very accessible metric. So let's just remind ourselves the ways in which share of search differs from traditional market research methods and metrics. Absolutely. So before I get started, I just want to say that traditional market research is great, but there's no controversial secret that it does have its flaws, that many people find it quite expensive, slow moving, and that it doesn't always reflect sales all too well. And forgive me, I'm going to quote David Ogilvy again here, who actually identified this problem already back in the 60s or 70s. And he said that the trouble with market research is that people don't think what they feel, they don't say what they think, and they don't do what they say. And what that entails is that if you ask somebody what they are going to do in the future, they might not be honest, and they might not do what they said they would do, even if they were honest. And if you look at share of search analysis, on the other hand, you aren't actually creating any new data like you would in a survey. You're simply observing and analyzing existing behavior. And many people forget that search is essentially the world's biggest source of behavioral data. Now, if we compare this to a survey where you force somebody to have an opinion regarding a brand, which we know most people don't, at least not on a conscious level, and you combine that with the fact that it's a primary behavioral data source, along with its strong connection to sales, it makes it for a very solid data point to use to represent your brand and to get a realistic idea of the effects of your brand building efforts on real behavior. And changing real behavior might sound sinister, but essentially that is the end goal of any marketer, that you want to create some form of change in behavior that could be sales, for example. Many people listening will have already wrapped up their planning for fiscal year 24, but can share of search be used to predict future market trends? So I absolutely love this question, and it's a fascinating topic within the share of search community. And if you look at a purchase cycle, the majority of people instinctively start with a search on Google when they're considering making a purchase. And Google themselves recently released a study that showed that the majority of people search even if the end purchase is at a physical store. And we can see this within our search data as well in what we call the predictive lag that exists. And that is the time between an initial increase in searches for a brand with the subsequent increase in sales that the brand gets. So for some car brands, we can see that searches actually predict market share movements up to six to nine months in advance. So that example is how searches can predict sales. But another great case is that during COVID, we could actually predict in what cities COVID-19 would spike based on search data. Because what do you do the moment you start to feel something strange going on in your body? I mean, me personally, I immediately go to Google and I Google the symptoms until I get scared enough to do something. And what we saw in our data was exactly that. It would start with an increase in searches for COVID symptoms in a city. And then the reporting of official new cases would happen a week or so after that. So by looking at Google data, we could predict actual people going to the hospital. Could you briefly explain the relationship between three metrics, a brand's share of market, or SOM, its share of voice, or SOV, and its share of search? Yeah, absolutely. So share of voice, or how much do you put into to media spend, correlates extremely well to your share of search. And as we discussed earlier, your share of search in turn correlates to share of market. So what you're left with is kind of 
uh, funnel. And that's exactly what I recommend to our clients to do. So you put your share of voice next to your share of search, which is the effects of your marketing, next to your share of market, which is how well that has converted. And if you look at that and then you see that we raised our share of voice, but it doesn't lead to an increase in share of search, then you know ahead of time that you're spending too little or on the wrong things because you're not raising the demand for your brand. However, if you do raise your share of voice and it does raise your share of search, but it doesn't raise your share of market, then what does that mean? Well, it means that you're successfully creating demand with your share of voice, but you have an issue with the conversion of that due to either price or distribution. And we have a case like that that we can cover later on, actually, for one of our clients. Does a change in share of search affect share of market? So yes and no. The actual search isn't what impacts the share of market. It's what the search represents. So an increase in share of search means that there's an increase in demand in the market for your brand. And that in turn increases your share of market. Carl, you're a lead analyst and on the founding team of My Telescope, which is a share of search tool that enables brands to understand the impact of their marketing. So what was your professional journey before joining My Telescope and how did it lead you to share of search? Yeah, so I grew up abroad and moved around a lot. And I think from this, I learned to study human behavior of the people around me for basically what was survival reasons. But when I was 18, I got the chance to continue doing this, but in the world of marketing, where I started with essentially serving coffee at this point. But this quickly led to assisting PR and marketing projects, and then a research role, which in turn snowballed into meeting and helping the founders of what is now my telescope research multiple data sets and methodologies in order to find a new way to prove the business effects of brand building. And this was something I did while I was studying economics. And I got a chance to work with a bunch of different market research tools. So I was working with everything from brand surveys, telephone interviews, modeling brand indexes, licensing social listening data, and then finally to share of search. And ever since Les Burnett came out with this research, things have grown exponentially from there. And now I manage training agencies and brands worldwide on this concept, running continuous analysis projects, and then I've also gotten to be a part of the Share of Search Council. Well, we'll talk about those in a moment, but I'm curious, what are the common challenges faced when interpreting Share of Search data, and how does my telescope help overcome them? Yeah, so the mistake that many people do is that they'll start their journey with Google Trends. And what they'll be left with is a lot of manual work and data that is sort of all over the place without any real way of explaining it. And first off, at my telescope, we make sure to have the best quality data, which currently is the search volume data that you can get from Google itself. Secondly, we've built a platform that really automates your setup and tracking as much as possible and brings you tools to track your campaigns, etc., So it's really built for strategists and planners rather than SEO experts that many other tools are. So really what you get is a nice fully automated dashboard with you and your competitors' brands, what has driven your success, and an AI summary of what has happened for your brand and category. From a strategist or an account planner's perspective, what are the features that My Telescope provides that are probably most helpful or practical? So I think the most practical part is that a lot of strategists and planners don't have that much time to spend on manually going through a ton of data. And I think the first thing that the platform does is that it serves the insight in a very easy to take in way. Secondly, it also allows you to see what is driving the effects of your brand. So when you see an increase in branded searches for your brand, you can also explain why that happened. And if you're lucky, you can actually see actual keywords relating to your campaigns. And finally, we do have the event plotter. So basically, you can put in all the campaigns you've had over the year, and you can then get a summary of the effects that those have created for your brand. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back after this message. Each month, in partnership with our friends at Kogan Page, the Big Eye Book Club features books by industry thought leaders. Our feature title for December is You Can't Make Money from a Dead Planet, The Sustainable Method for Driving Profits by Mark Shaler. 
The book provides insights and tools for aligning business practices with sustainability, covering topics including net zero, circular economy, and zero waste. Mark combines explanations of current challenges with examples of successful sustainable businesses and brands. As an InClear Focus listener, you can save 25% on a print or electronic version of this month's featured book using the exclusive promo code BIGI25. This code is valid for all Coken Page titles, including pre orders and their free paperback and ebook bundle offer. Shipping is always free to the US and UK when you order directly from Coken Page, and it supports the authors as well. So to order your copy of You Can't Make Money from a Dead Planet, go to koganpage.com. Welcome back. I'm talking with Carl Clevbo, lead analyst at My Telescope. Can you explain the process of collecting and analyzing share of search data using My Telescope? Yeah, so basically when you type in your brand, the system will then scrape the web for search keywords. So what people have searched for in combination with your brand name. And we deliver that to you so that you can then select which ones represent your brand. And then that will be visualized in a graph where you can follow how your brand is coming along. We love practical examples on InClear Focus. So Carl, could you share some use cases that illustrate how brands and agencies are using my telescope to inform their marketing strategies? Absolutely. So we have a ton of great cases, but one that I really like is the biggest premium retailer in Southeast Asia called Math Active. And they had the challenge of managing hundreds of brands like New Balance and Foot Locker, etc. in multiple markets. And it just wasn't realistic to conduct brand tracking surveys you know, for each brand and market because they're just so global. But they still needed a metric to hold their brand building accountable for driving growth. And they had heard of Share Search and adopted my telescope for all of their brands and markets. And they tracked their top level activities and saw if they did, you know, raise their branded searches. And they saw that those campaigns were also the ones that were driving their sales. So first of all, they used it as an effect metric, but they also used it to track the purchase funnels. And when they were analyzing the relationship between the branded searches for one of their sneakers, they saw that For one of the brands, they did create an uptick in brand searches, but it didn't create an increase in sales. And they started asking, like, why is this? And what they found was that there had actually been a specific issue with that shoe in the store, resulting in it not converting into sales. So they could see, we spent this much, we did create a lift in brand searches. So we did create an effect with our marketing, but we had an issue with the conversion later on. So yeah, they were very happy to be able to use my telescope in that case. I really liked how Matt Skeogson interpreted the data you shared, highlighting the ways in which Ukrainian customers ordered products from Zara in Poland when stores in their own country closed due to the war. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I think this is just such a great example, both because it shows the value of tracking branded search, but it also shows the long-term effects of marketing. And I was given this case by our amazing team of developers in the Ukraine. So I just want to give a shout out to them. And they reported that when the Russian invasion began, all of these Zara stores shut down essentially, both online and in real life. And all of Zara's marketing was stopped. So what happens when a brand shuts down all marketing? Does it die out instantly or what happens? Well, what we did see was that there was an immediate drop in demand for Zara as the war started. But then something strange happened. Slowly but surely, the branded search started returning. And eventually, it it reached basically the same level as it was before the war. And it turns out that Zara had done such a good job of creating a strong brand that regardless of the war, customers were still trying to find ways to get their products. So they had been uh, actually found a loophole where they were buying it from neighboring countries such as Poland. And I think this is just such a great example because you can see that through the branded searches that if you do actually build a strong brand, the effects will continue being top of mind and driving sales long after marketing is done. Well, of course, here in the States, Nike recently appointed a new chief marketing officer, and you published an article showing how my telescope provides some context around what she's walking into. I did see that news and it made me a little bit curious to why they would change CMO. Of course, he's been there for for a long while. So it's, of course, 
you eventually, but I set up an analysis against the biggest sportswear brands out there. So Adidas and Puma. And what I actually saw was that Nike over the last 12 months had actually dropped in share of search by 20%. So regardless of the reason why they changed CMO, the new CMO is walking into a tough situation. So it'll be interesting to see how she tackles that. Spending more on advertising than competitors relative to a brand's market is defined as excess share of voice or ESOV. Does this show up in share of search data? Yeah, absolutely. So we see an extremely strong correlation between excess share of voice reflecting in creating excess share of search, which we talked about earlier leads to excess share of market. So that's a way to look at it. But what I think is also super interesting when you talk about share of voice is that it has had also its flaws earlier. I might say actually most share of voice data doesn't reflect the entirety of what is being spent because it often neglects what is being spent into some of the digital campaigns as well as PR campaigns. So when you have a metric that correlates very well with share of voice, like share of search, you'll sometimes see a bump in share of search that can't be explained by share of voice. So on paper, they haven't increased their spend, but you can see something happening in your share of search. So sometimes you'll see that that actually captures things that have gone unnoticed by share of voice tracking, or it can just be that a brand has had some organic spread beyond what is actually controlled by the marketers. My telescope has users around the world. So I'm curious, Carl, are you seeing share of search vary across different categories, countries, or languages? Yeah, so we have the possibility to really look into any country around the world, with with an exception of a handful of countries. In general, people are people. So we don't really see any differences in the correlation between branded search and sales around the world. What we do see is a difference in different categories. And that relates to the purchase cycle of different uh, categories. And an example of this might be comparing the purchase cycle of a car to a shampoo bottle. In the category for cars, we'll see that the lag time between searches increasing due to a, a brand campaign, for example, and the sales increasing might be six to nine months just because it takes a longer time to buy a car or to consider which one you're going to buy. But for a shampoo bottle, for example, it might be instant or the next week. We've talked quite a bit about demand building versus demand harvesting media and creative on In Clear Focus this last year. Based on what you're seeing, it sounds like there are some differences in share of search data between those sort of broad reach brand building media campaigns and more targeted performance oriented advertising. Whereas you say typically the purchase cycle is going to be shorter. Is that right? Absolutely. And I have to say, I love talking about marketing as demand building and demand harvesting, contrary to brand building versus performance. Because when you talk about it like that, it it just implies how both work together and need each other to work. And what we see in share of search, what best boosts it is, in fact, brand building broad reach media campaigns that have the biggest impact on creating share of search. Uh, So it's definitely a demand building metric rather than a demand harvesting metric. What has been your most interesting or surprising finding while working with share of search data? I think one of the interesting things that you can see with share of search data and with any effect metric that isn't just a vanity metric is that quite a few campaigns don't actually impact brands all too much. Peter Field right now is doing this great work called The Cost of Dull basically talking about the extreme amount of waste that goes into media on advertisements that aren't actually that interesting. So that is definitely something we can see in our data as well, that there are definitely some campaigns that create no spike in interest for for the brand at all. We've talked a lot about attention over the past couple of years, but creative effectiveness is still super important. Absolutely. And I think it's about being creative, but also creating an interest for the brand and creating a behavioral change. And it can be a small one, like just typing in the brand's name. But I think there's no better way to predict a change in behavior that is sales than with behavioral data like search. AI is integrated into the latest version of my telescope. Carl, what role do you foresee AI playing in enhancing the capabilities of share of search analysis going forward? Yeah, so I think the role of AI in share of search really comes down to the fact that There's just so much data 
there are 90,000 searches every minute, I believe. So there's just so much data out there for you to start digging into. But our time is limited. So having an AI that can scan this data and bring automated analysis based on it, I think that would be a complete game changer. Carl, do you have any plans to integrate Amazon search query performance data in my telescope? Yeah, we are actually agnostic to the source of search data that we bring into the analysis. We see that Amazon search data plays a role further down the funnel than Google search data does, but that when somebody is actually searching on Amazon, they are very ready to buy. So we are definitely looking to implement that in the future, along with social search, such as TikTok. 40% of Gen Z start searches on TikTok these days rather than Google. So interesting to hear that you have TikTok in your sites. Absolutely. No, I believe that there is a lot of potential and I think there's a lot of misunderstandings in regards to social search. I believe that social search like TikTok is very much an inspirational phase of your searching. And once you have a brand or a product that you've been made aware of via the social search, then you'll go into Google to understand where can I buy this? What's the price? Can I learn more about the brand? And then eventually when the time's in, you might actually go in straight to Amazon and search and purchase it there. Carl, does share of search work for all categories? And is it equally useful in B2C as well as B2B? So great question. We get this question quite a lot. And it was actually one of the big questions that we were asking ourselves when we first started looking into this. And what we've seen in our studies is that even though there's a small amount of people who do search, those represent the broader public. And the searches do correlate well with sales, even in those cases. So that's on the FMCG side. We've uh, tested that out on all types of different cases that we never thought would work, such as ice cream, pasta, chips, chocolate beverages, so so a number of weird ones. And in regards to B2B, we see that in the same way there, the way people search for B2B brands correlates well with their sales. But the search might be at a different stage in the purchase journey than it would for a B2C brand. An example of this might be that within a B2B sales, I might be approached by a seller and I might not actually search for that company until the last stage where I'm actually considering buying from them and I'm doing my due diligence. But in the end, there is almost always somebody who searches as long as your brand is is somewhat known. You've been instrumental in establishing the Share of Search Council. Uh, You referenced it earlier. Could you tell us a bit about what that is and what its mission is? Yeah. So the goal of the Share of Search Council is really to be an independent organization to further the research and the development of the metric. And we want to keep that separate from my telescope because, of course, we have a commercial goal as well. But the council consists of both people who have been instrumental in the creation of the metric, such as Les Bennett, but also CMOs and agency members actively using the metric operationally. And we'll occasionally get together to discuss best practice and and how we can further the use of this uh, within the marketing industry. What advice do you have for listeners who are intrigued by the potential of Share of Search and want to learn more about its applications in brand planning and strategy? Are there any webinars, papers or podcasts that you would want to recommend? So I would definitely recommend listening to Les Minette's talks on Share of Search on YouTube. And I've tried to do it justice here, but there's nobody who does it as eloquently as Les. After that, of course, you are more than welcome to look at our LinkedIn and YouTube channel, where we host webinars on how to more operationally use Share of Search. And we also post daily insights, which allow us to you know, stay up to date with how brands and trends are actually performing. Another person that I'd recommend, actually, if you're looking at Share of Search from an SEO perspective is Andrew Holland who's been talking a lot about share of search from the SEO's perspective. Great, thank you. Are there any upcoming features or events from my telescope that we should be looking out for? Absolutely. So if you are interested in trying share of search out for your business, I would definitely check out our newest updated version of my telescope. And in this newest version, we are training now a sophisticated AI to basically feed you insights on your brand and market based on real-time primary data. 
And apart from that, you can always follow us on LinkedIn and social channels where we will be posting about upcoming webinars. So yeah, look there to stay updated. Carl, if in Clear Focus listeners are interested in learning more about my telescope, what's the best way to do so? So the best way to learn about my telescope is to follow us on LinkedIn, my telescope. And you can also visit us at mytelescope.io, where we have a, a bunch of resources on the concept of share of search. We have our share of search tool that you can trial for free. And we have a bunch of insights that we publish almost daily on brands and trends that are current right now. Carl, thank you very much for being our guest this week on In Clear Focus. Thank you so much for having me, Adrian. Thanks again to my guest this week, Carl Clevbo, lead analyst at My Telescope. As always, you'll find a full transcript of our conversation, along with links to the resources we discussed, on the Big Eye website at bigeyeagency.com. Just select podcast from the menu. Thanks for listening to In Clear Focus, produced by Big Eye. I've been your host, Adrian Tennant. Until next week, goodbye. Goodbye.